first thing that I wanted to talk about, and John and Martha mentioned that we started out at King Schools with VHS tapes for the well, beyond that, of course, John and Martha traveling around and doing in person school. The real first expansion of King Schools came with putting that, that training, that teaching onto video and making it accessible. And that accessibility is what really allowed King Schools to grow and allowed so many pilots. We, we figure well over a million pilots uh, to date over the last 15 years have studied with King Schools. And that's a tremendous number, but that number was made possible by this expansion out to videotapes that could be sent and, and watched at home. And of course, from there, we moved on and, and we started doing uh, computer-based training back when it was just barely possible to watch a video on a PC. I mean, we, we looked around, searched high and low for all the right, uh, right hardware and software to be able to display the video on a, on a PC. And that, that was another big success for King Schools in terms of keeping up with technology and being able to meet our customers where, where they needed to do their studying. From there, we went on, of course, to the internet and started you know, our, our whole um, process of internet accessibility for our courses. And the interesting thing is that the one thing we gave up when we went to the internet was the ability to take a King Schools course even if you were offline. So the internet required what? An internet connection, right? So that, that in, is really interesting because now we've come full circle and we've come back to the ability to take King Schools courses even if you're offline. And the way that we do that is with apps. Our latest app that we're uh, talking about today is our King Test Prep app. And it runs on iOS, so iPhone, iPad, and so on. But it also runs on Android. Uh, so if folks have an Android-based phone or, or tablet, they're able to access this course. So I, I want to give that, that app just a little bit of context of where it, it fits in. So we've developed a King School study method, which really guarantees a high score on your written test. And it's made up of three parts, and we call it VIP learning. The first part is video education. So you can go through our courses and watch lesson by lesson a video presentation of about five minutes, which is followed by interactive questions, which checks and makes sure that you understood the video that you just watched, gives you the ability to see explanations for those questions, and go back and review the video until you feel like you've, you've got that nailed and you move on. The next two steps are interactive questions and practice and recall, and that's about test prep. So once you've acquired all the knowledge, and we're, we're very strong about the need to go through a true ground school and be able to um, acquire all of the knowledge and not just study the questions. And the FAA is trying to stop the ways that folks have today of just memorizing questions. And there's some developments coming from the FAA that are going to change the way the test questions are presented to the customer and, uh, or the learning pilot when they go in and take the test. And it's, it's basically going to eliminate a lot of the test, pure test prep options that people have because they won't score well that way without having the knowledge. We understand and, and acknowledge that test prep's required because the, the questions can be tricky. You need practice of taking your knowledge and applying it to a question in order to arrive at the correct answer. So we've worked a lot on interactive questions and the practice and recall steps. We have those available if you access our course online through the web. There's, there's question review and there's sample tests that you can take. We've taken all those and we've put them into the test prep app together with something brand new, which is flashcards, which give you the ability to look at the questions from a little different perspective. So rather than uh, asking a question, then having choices that you can pick, we just ask the question and see, can you, re can you recall the answer for that question or not? And, and that's about really solidifying the knowledge and making sure that you understand all the concepts rather than just a lucky guess on a multiple choice. So that's what, what this is about. This new app that we're announcing today is about the interactive questions and the practice and recall. The video instruction is covered in a separate app that we have. So when you're going through that step, we, we call it the King Companion app. You just download it for free 
and go through. You can watch your video on your iPad, iPhone, online or offline. And once you've gone through and you've completed the whole ground school, then you download the test prep app. And now you're really prepping for your, for your test and making sure that you're going to get a high score. OK, so this is the app running on an iPhone right now. And what I have listed here are all of the courses that I've enrolled at through the King Schools iLearn system. That's what we call it. You go to ilearn.kingschools.com is where you enroll in your courses and take your courses on the internet. Now, if you're using the app, like I am here, it connects to that same database. You're sharing all the same information, the status information, your progress, questions answered correctly, incorrectly. It's all shared between uh, whether you're accessing it online on the internet or you're accessing it from your phone. And if you're offline, you can take questions and it'll remember which ones you got right, which ones you got wrong. The next time you're connected to the internet, it syncs it all up to the King School servers and then it's available if you're accessing from the web or, or maybe I switch to an iPad. Basically, it just allows you to move to whatever device you happen to have handy to study. Okay, so here's the list of courses I have. Of course, I have a good number of them. I'm going to select the private pilot test prep. And we see that we have flashcards, question review, and practice exams. So taking a quick look first at the flashcards, we see that I can select from decks of cards, which are ones that are not graded. Basically, I haven't selected those cards. I might have viewed them, but I didn't select if I had it or, or didn't have the knowledge. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select not graded. And so I get a stack of flashcards. And I can study the entire deck of cards, or I can select a specific topic that I'd like to study. For instance, if I want to do aerodynamics, I'm going to click on um, the not graded for aerodynamics. OK? And then I, then I, get, a, uh, I, I get a question that comes up. And you'll notice there's no answers here. It's only which V-speed represents maximum flap extended speed. So now I have to think about it. What, what is that? And uh, when, I, when I think I have the answer, then I flip the card. So I just tapped on the bottom there, flip card, and I see VFE. Now I have the option as well to tap on explanation, and I can get an explanation of uh, that, that particular card. Okay. So now, now that I have guessed at it, I flip the card, determine whether I'm right or not, review the explanation. Now my options are whether I need to review it more or I've got it. And that will depend on whether that card shows up later or not. So in this case, I had VFE, believe it or not. That was, that was a good one. I'm going to hit got this. And then it just takes you to the next, next card, which V-speed represents maximum landing gear extended speed. So this is going through, apparently, the V-speeds. And I can flip it, got this. And once, once I'm done and, and want to go back, um, then I just click up here at the top. And it's updated, it's updated my grades. The number is not graded. I have three now that are got this. And I can review those if I want as well. I can tap on any of these. The got this, the needs review, not graded, and all. And I can also shuffle the deck so they appear in a different order. I can review all the cards. So it really gives you a lot of options to go through the knowledge. Now I'm going to go back to the top and we'll take a quick look at question review. And I'm going to tap on unanswered here. And I can tap on unanswered, incorrect, or correct. So if I tap on unanswered, now this one, same kind of options that I had before in terms of either selecting the, the whole set of questions or a subset of the questions. So let's go back and we'll select uh, flight instruments and I'll select unanswered. So here now we have the answer choices. And these are FAA style. They, they've really been designed, and many of them came from old FAA databases when the database was available, but many, many have been rewritten by King Schools to keep up with changes in regulations and so on, and uh, also feedback from customers in order to really refine our database and make sure that it accurately reflects the current FAA question testing databank. Although the questions may not be exact, they're going to be very similar because we have a lot of experience in how the FAA tends to ask questions. So here, I can just select one of these. I'm going to select at random. Oh, well, I got that one right. That was, that was fortunate. So you get immediate feedback. And you may not have heard it, but we, we get the classic King Schools bings and bongs is what we call them. So we get positive reinforcement when you've selected a question correctly or incorrectly. 
Um, so we can go ahead and do that. If I have any question about this or I want to review it later, down at the bottom there's a, the option to mark it. And once again, I can view the explanation and it tells me why the correct answer is correct and why the incorrect answers are incorrect. Okay, so that's my explanation. And then I have next and previous down here at the bottom. So I can just go through those questions. Let's go back. So as you can tell, this is, this is just with an iPhone in my hand. I'm able to access the, these questions. And I could use an I, iPad if I needed to, but we've really spent a lot of time formatting it so that you can do it with one hand on your iPad. Whether you're on an airplane, you're on a train, you're dry, you know, somebody else is driving in the car, <laughs> you're a passenger, hopefully. You, know, you don't want to be, be doing this, but you, you could do it. Uh, you just don't want to. Um, so in any case, that's the, um, that's the questions. And then we have practice exams. So we have two standard or three standard practice exams. And we can see I've taken practice exam one, and I have some, some results there. I didn't do very well, apparently. I got a 3.3%, but I only answered three questions, I think. So it wasn't that bad. Um, but we have three standard curated exams. And we have one uh, which is called unlimited random exams that you can keep retaking, and it'll randomly create a representative exam each time you do. So let's go ahead and, and we'll just start the um, start one of these tests. So this really models what the customer or the learning pilot will experience when they go to the testing center. So we've tried to match that experience very closely. So when I do the, the question answers here and go through them, I don't get any feedback, right? It's, this is just like taking a, the test. And there's a timer running that you see in the upper right that, that is uh, going to give you the standard uh, time for the test. And I can go through, I can once again mark uh, questions. I can review. So I can go in and select any of the questions that I've, I've previously answered or marked. It shows up that they they were previously marked, like this one has the little orange along the left here because I had marked it. So you, you go through those and then eventually you can suspend or you can finish the exam. And when you finish it, it's going to go ahead and grade it and you get a nice grading report. In addition to the grading report, you can go and once again see all of the questions, which most of mine are skipped, uh, and review those questions. So maybe I want to review three of them that I missed and then you can just see those three questions that you missed and go through and take them again. So, so that's the, the test prep app. It's, a, it's available for free. All you have to do is purchase a, a King Schools course and download it from the App Store and you have the alternative way to take the course. You can still take it entirely on the internet, on a web browser, and any web browser on any device. Or I think most people will want to download the companion app to take the video lessons and this new test prep app in order to take the test prep. So pretty much run through the entire course on their app. It's just, it's fast, it's easy, it works if it's online or offline. Going from question to question is incredibly quick because it's all downloaded and resides on the, the device. And you can switch between devices without any uh, issue at all. Just seamlessly go between devices. All the questions I marked, all the questions I answered previously, correctly or incorrectly, they're all there. So you can just move from device to device. The next topic is really an exciting one for me because this represents a new business for King Schools. And we've been growing a lot over the last 10, 20 years, well really from inception, but we've been growing a lot the last five to 10 years, and, and it's been wonderful to do that, but we're really, we've been within this domain of pilots for a long time. We've had mechanics test prep for the uh, general airframe and power plant for many years. So we had, our, we had our toe in the mechanics world. Now we've jumped into the water completely, gone underwater, come back up, and we've come back up with a curriculum that allows a mechanics school a college, university, maybe a flight school that wants to, to expand as well, to start up a brand new mechanics program and take mechanics from, from beginning to end. Not just the test prep, but an entire curriculum. 
And Brian's going to come up and talk about how that works. And because uh, it's really been his brainchild as far as putting this together based on the new FAA Part 147 rules that allow for this type of a curriculum to get out there and take a mechanic from zero to turning wrenches with a certificate. So, Brian? Thank you, Barry. And uh, yeah, definitely been an exciting time at King's Schools. When uh, he called me, I still remember the uh, how quickly can you get here conversation. And uh, moving from the East Coast to San Diego was an amazing opportunity and uh, just a beautiful city and I love the opportunity. But going into the, the maintenance side, we saw a demand, okay, that's there. And any of you obviously that know the, the Boeing and Technician study, um, there's an overwhelming demand. There's more mechanics needed than there are pilots. And so if we look at that trajectory, what's that gonna do to us? We're gonna come to a grinding halt because we're falling short of that. There's maintenance schools that are out there, but they're just not able to produce the overwhelming demand that's there. So kind of took that idea back to the office and how do we fix that? How can we change what we're currently doing? Because I couldn't find a commercially produced uh, syllabus that was short of something prepping you for test prep, which we already had, that, that would work for multiple entities, okay? And we mentioned we have colleges, we have flight schools, we have military that get out that are crew chiefs and want to transition. We have high school STEM programs or just the private individual. But now we have a large um, conglomerate of flight schools nationwide. How do we use them? Every one of them has a maintenance facility. How can we utilize that? They don't know how to, so we had to create a product that was now going to make it easy for them. And so that's where we dove into this. As you'll see, the, most of you are familiar with the, the Boeing Pilot and Technician Outlook, and they tell you here that you know there's more need for uh, mechanics as there are pilots. Um, another thing that I put down at the bottom, I talked about who's, who needs this and who can uh, benefit. But this year, if you don't know, the FAA is putting out grants up to $500,000. If anybody has a particular program, this is a huge advantage for you to expand your flight school, to teach mechanics, high schools, anybody that's out there that's doing that. So that's one thing that I wanted to do. So how did we want to put the program together? We started last year when the new ACS curricula came out for part 147. Before it was even approved, we started going down that path because we were looking, any of you that are familiar with this, online training was never permitted. You had to have face-to-face -face contact hours. Okay, so it meant brick and mortar. What did we do? We excluded half of the population. When I set up the Liberty program, what we did with Liberty was I wanted to go after a student pilot training populace that everybody else was overlooking. I wanted the career changers, the 30 to 40 somethings. They've got a full-time job, they've got a family, but they can't break free to go to that brick and mortar school. Our maintenance training schools right now are brick and mortar. Okay, we've got this other group that we can go after, but we need to have a curriculum that works with their schedule. That's what this brings to the table. So it meets the new ACS 147. We went line by line. We have a 147 page syllabus that does all the compliance tracking for every ground school training. So rather than just test prep, this is full ground school. In addition, it has test prep built into it for general airframe and power plant. It's fully integrated, so it works with any of you that have used any of our uh, Cessna training courses that have the course tracking application, and the way that it works is we now have an integrated tracking method for all of the tasks for mechanics. So when you have to do a change of tire, time a magneto, okay, change the oil, all of these need to be done. We have the task listed with the completion standard, and then your mechanic will sign off on that particular task in our course tracking application. Once they've completed their 30 months, they print that out and export it, take it to the FISDO, and they're done. So this is, the FISDO will have a foolproof um, tracking summary that's with that. So it's three courses. It's, it's one um, course, we call it, with three phases that does general airframe power plant, you can do it in that order. We have some schools that like to flip it up and do general power plant and then airframe. And it, 
It's entirely up to you. It's able to be done all together. You'll see that it has 68.5 hours of the, the online knowledge curriculum that's there, but then we allow uh, you know, over 500 hours for the practical time. Students get lifetime access to this. So once you get the particular course, you can go back and review the content as much as you possibly would want. The last part is, who's this gonna work for? Okay, and I talked about, if you're, say you're that high school student, Okay, you can't take the test till you're 18, but this program is designed to 147 standards. Okay, it meets that, but it'll work for the OJT side as well, so the on-job training student. So if they buy this, they're gonna go through all of the same ground school knowledge, the practice test for the written, and they're gonna do all of the task elements that are completed, because both are taking the same practical test at the end. So, it will work for high school STEM programs. So when we're dealing with high schools that want to create mechanics, their senior year, they can do their practical test. But they're now, when you're doing sophomore and junior year and they're working up to that, they can take this curriculum and run with it. Colleges and universities, we're dealing with um, local schools that have this, but now obviously since I had the Liberty program that we expanded to 83 training locations, and use your imagination what we're envisioning with mechanics. So this, because 147 never permitted satellite training options, now it does. So all of that opens up the fact that there's a whole lot more opportunity with that. Maintenance schools, every flight school that's out there has a maintenance training shop. Okay. You can buy this, put it on the shelf, and now you have an intern that's working in your shop. People say, well, how do I do this? Well, you have flight instructors. What do you charge per hour for a flight instructor? Charge that for your A&P. When they're teaching somebody how to change a tire, how to do something like that, tell them to do the online curriculum, and you have tasks. So when you're done with the task, you're going to use your iPad or you're going to go to the computer and log that training activity, and the A&P is going to sign off on it. <laughs> Maintenance schools like the availability because they can transition away from the 1,900 hours that they probably had in their op specs that now they can use an online curricula and focus more on the actual content that they're delivering. So it's the flip the classroom technique where rather than just lecturing in a classroom, you can take the material home, do that, and then come back into class and teach. So you can give them tasks that are specific. I used to do it on the flight training side that they would do the curriculum and learn weight and balance. We'd come in and we'd give them a practical task that was your boss has given you 10,000 widgets and you have to fly it from here to here. Where can you load up the plane and how many trips is it gonna take? Then you throw them the curveball. Well, three hours into that flight, you're running low on fuel. Where's your weight and balance now? Okay, so you give them those practical exercises so they get to correlation. That's where we're gonna make better mechanics because we can train that way and that's where your maintenance schools can transition to this. We get down to military uh, conversions. We've obviously had a big military drawdown. We've got a lot of crew chiefs that are out there that do not have civilian A&P certificates. How do we transition to that? Well, they have to prepare for the exact same, you know, practical environment to get the A&P. So these individuals can come in they need to study that ground school to make sure that we know everything. They can go through the practical um, task environment, same thing. So these have been incredibly hot in our booth. Um, I think I've probably explained this about 20 times a day uh, over at our booth because this was just launched. The press release just went out. You've, I'm sure you've seen uh, John and Martha talking about it on Facebook, but we're excited about it. And my idea was we, we saw a need and wanted to create something that was going to work for every potential student that's out there, whether they're OJT and want to do the 30 months or are in a 147 environment. So uh, I, I'm around for any questions that may come up, but you know, certainly hope that uh, this helps put a dent in our need. Brian, would I be permitted to ask you Thanks, a couple Brian. questions? Sure. The Boeing study said we're short on mechanics and we're short on pilot. About how many mechanics are needed according to the Boeing study? Uh, 600 and 610,000. 610,000 610, mechanics, correct? New mechanics. New, all right. So how yes. many new pilots are needed? It was just over 600, what, 601? Martha? 602,000. So there are more, we, we need more mechanics than we need new pilots. Correct. Uh, how many uh, how many local schools can teach mechanics? 
Well, with this, all of them. So that's the idea. But every, every FBO, could, every flight training organization could use their fleet of airplanes to, to train mechanics. Is that correct? That's correct. And so I was talking to somebody yesterday just from Wisconsin, and if, if they're correct, they told me there's one maintenance training school in the state. Okay, but how many flight schools are within the state? How many FBOs are within the state? Okay, that could pick up and expand on this. So this could rapidly expand the number of mechanics that are available. To Without the, any overhead. The They've right. already got right. the materials. Yeah. And for the benefit of Peggy Chabrian, how many of those mechanics have to be male? None. <laughs> I rest my case, Your Honor. <laughs> well, the, you made a great case, John. So anybody who, in, any uh, flight school that has maintenance facilities that doesn't pick up on this is missing a tremendous opportunity. Because they, they've got the mechanics. They're, at, they're turning wrenches out in the shop. All is they have to do is take the same type of curriculum that they're using to train pilots and implement it work together with their shop. They don't have to hire special instructors. Any A and P can sign off the work and the tasks that are involved in the curriculum. So they, they've got the shop, they've got the airplanes, they've got the instructors that they need. They'll probably have apprentice mechanics as it is that are going through old ways of becoming a, a mechanic. But by implementing this curriculum, they can get there much quicker and they can formalize the process and build up a trust relationship with their FISDO that they're turning out great mechanics and our curriculum will ensure that they are. And, uh, and that'll change, it's a game changer. They can make money, the, uh, the learning uh, mechanics benefit from having a great and formal program and, uh, and of course the whole industry benefits by meeting that supply of mechanics that are needed. Okay, so, so that's cleared for aviation maintenance. We, we love the topic, we hope you do too, um, and uh, we're, we're going to see this business take off for King Schools over the next couple of years, and we're really looking forward to it. So the, the next topic, I'm going to invite uh, John King to come up and tell you a little bit about something brand new for King Schools. You know, we've gone to pretty much all remote um, teaching through the web, through the apps, and so on. And, but we miss seeing people's faces. So we decided that, that we needed to, to do something that we could bring folks to San Diego, bring aviation educators to San Diego, and create a forum where they could exchange information, and we could update them on how King School's products can help them help their, their learning pilots and mechanics. So John, do you want to come up and talk about it? Okay. You know, um, one of the reasons we've taught a big number of pilots is we saw uh, our business originally as providing access to aviation to people who had a passion for flying and wanted to learn to fly. And we, we sold our courses to individuals. And, uh, the, and, and the way that happened, Martha and I were here at Oshkosh. It was the first time we attended an air show. And our courses, Mar uh, I suggested to Martha that we should sell our, our courses to individuals, and Martha says, you're crazy. Uh, we won't be able to sell to flight instructors anymore. So we came here, and we, and we were telling we were selling, we were telling people we were selling to flight instructors, but the people that came up, we'd ask them, and they were all individuals, and, and we were selling to individuals, and the individuals were paying $500 a course back in the, in the, in the 1980s for these courses. And, and it's just that the individuals wanted them. We felt a, there was a strong drive on the part of individuals, and that's the business that we saw ourselves get into. Um, now, we, what we're talking about is courses for colleges and universities. And uh, we have not done that, had not done that before. We're doing it now, and it's being very successful. And I would like for Brian to come back up and tell you about that success. Well. Thank you, John. It's obviously uh, uh, education, colleges, and universities is a, something that I'm not afraid of talking about. I'm familiar with accreditation and uh, VA and different government agencies, not just the FAA, so I, it's not something that I cringe away from. 
And this is something that I kind of uh, called the concierge service, that many of these uh, flight schools and uh, uh, universities and so on um, may just have a board of directors that kind of tap somebody and say, you know, we need to get in there. We need to start that particular program, and they don't know how to do it. Okay, so we're providing a free service that I've coined the concierge service. You need help writing TCOs? We'll do it. Okay, you need um, curriculum written? We'll do it. Okay, these are things that I've done. It's already written. Okay, just put your logo and name on the top of it and click submit. Okay, these are things that we've got done for you. And um, this has gone into full speed ahead. You know, in the, I've, I've been on the team for uh, just under two years and we're over, you know, 43 university partners and growing rapidly. So these are things that they're seeing, you know, we want to be there for questions, for assistance and different things like that. But now the sharing of things and how we grow beyond just the flight schools, that's a huge network. But the university side, we wanted to share that information. We've heard different comments from people, from uh, pilot examiners that now we're, we have a younger generation of students, okay, that are taking our particular courses. They may be learning a little bit differently. They may not be having as successful of an outcome on some of the check rides that are being administered. These are things that we want to take that information and then we have a solution. You know, Mary Shu is one of our speakers that we wanted to bring out to this uh, symposium that she's been experiencing this. She also sat down with John and Martha and recorded check ride uh, videos for each one of our courses. Okay, and it goes deep dive into the course that you have ACS that if you're familiar, it says, okay, there's five different topics. Let's select one of the five topics and so on. We go through each one of those topics for the students so the student gets exposed to everything. Well, we've heard from her that students have gone through the course and said, you know, I wasn't quite ready. There were a couple of those questions that I didn't know, so then they go back and study. So for a private pilot student, it's an area that is unknown. They've never been through a check ride before. So flight schools are very conscious of their pass ratings and how to keep those up. So we wanted to talk about that. We're going to bring in um, some discussions on self-examining authority, some talks about this A&P curriculum, um, and then add some humor to it. We're also bringing in some uh, key vendors and people that want to talk to these particular individuals. We want to uh, get your feedback, your input, um, and we're going to have door prizes in between all of the speakers. So the idea behind this is not just a symposium that's a King School symposium. We have multiple vendors um, that this is released that they're attending and going to be uh, offering door prizes. We're going to be speaking. You see we have multiple guest speakers that are coming up and sharing ideas. Uh, one of the focuses is going to be simulator use um, in the training environment. We know the cost of aircraft are going through the roof. We know simulators are an amazing training asset. So how do we do that? And so we've got some different ideas about proficiency-based courses, how you can do that, how you can do, um, we have one entity that's doing what they call a phase zero approach. Okay, and then we've got another person that has coined and created multiple different um, proficiency-based training courses. We're going to bring it in and teach them all how we do it, but the same thing on the mechanic side. We want to walk you through how to do all of that. The, the need for this is when we talk to examiners, we hear from examiners that we are in an aviation education crisis right now. That, and, and what's prompted that crisis to some extent, I'll get out from in front of you, what's created that crisis to some extent, as we understand it, is that People are being hired by the airlines at a rapid rate. People, are, flight instructors are working towards building time to get to the airlines. And building time seems to be at the top of their mind and not necessarily doing a good job of teaching. And examiners are telling us that their students are arriving at check rides not properly prepared. And, 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 and that is a crisis in the aviation community right now. That for the very first time, we have felt that, that instructors aren't leading with integrity. And, and, and the question is, are they trustworthy? Are they taking care of 
their own needs or are they taking care of the, the learning pilot's needs? And, and that question is out there. And part of the, the reason for doing this symposium is to bring leaders of the aviation community together and talk about how do we solve that dilemma. It's a, it's a dilemma that's all over the aviation training community. We're doing, we're doing the best sales we've ever done, but are we serving our customers as well as we should be? And that's the issue. And it's all about the issue of integrity and trust. And I think we need to focus on that as an aviation community. And that's what this is all about. No, definitely good points there. So uh, it's in September. So that you guys will see, you're welcome to come to San Diego. If uh, anybody from the, the media or any vendors or anybody else that's here would be like any further information, you can see Bill. And, um, you know, definitely what a better time than coming to San Diego. We also managed to butt it right up our events on Thursday and Friday. Saturday happens to be the Miramar Air Show where the Blue Angels are flying. So, you know, what a better idea for pilots while you're out there. You know, you can catch something else. We're going to talk about an online ordering portal. Okay, that uh, for those of you that don't know what this is, that was another brainchild we did about uh, six months ago or a little bit more that uh, a lot of our... Uh, flight schools were ordering product from us and we had some supply chain issues that we kind of were foreshadowing and things like that. So we went to full digital option for our flight schools, solving that problem. But then what we did is in the past when King schools had physical product, they could buy this physical product and put it into their pilot shops. Well, when we went online, we removed that from them, okay? So now they could just buy like a private instrument commercial course. Now what we've done is we've given them access to all 115 courses that are being sold that they can resell. So any one of their individuals, if they want to sell a drone course, a flight instructor refresher, the maintenance course, anything like that now, they're going to be able to purchase from our online portal at their deeply discounted price and resell to anybody. And it'll instantly produce a course key. So that's what we've got. We talked about the maintenance program and, and Mary Shu coming in. Simulation is a huge part of this. John and Martha are going to share, you know, obviously some entrepreneurial success. And uh, we have some airline partners that are going to come in and talk about the, you know, pipeline pathway options. And so these are things that, you know, I basically wanted to told that came to me and said, well, why do, why do we want to come? And I said, because that's your audience. You know, you guys, they're training the product you want. We're just giving you a venue that you can be in front of them and, you know, shake hands and greet and meet. Um, the other thing about this symposium, it's free. So all of these people that want to attend, okay, the key decision makers for flight schools, for everything else, no charge. So we want them to come to the event, okay? And so I'm sure this is being recorded. So, you know, pass it on, pass on the notes. It's, uh, you know, that's something that we wanted to make sure is there. Self-examining is another one that, that a lot of flight schools out there have had some difficulties with self-examining authority either getting it or the problems, that's going to be a key talking point. We've got some uh, discussion points that we're going to bring up and share and talk about. So um, anyway, that's the symposium. If you've got questions, Bill and I are going to be in the back. We're happy to uh, discuss it. But we want this to um, continue to cultivate, work with that group, and be an ongoing annual thing. So. And we're also looking for a cool name for it. So we've got a little bit of an internal thing that if anybody comes up with a, you know, an on, a nice, cool name, we're calling it the San Diego Aviation Symposium until we come up with a cool name. But thank you. All right. Thanks, Brian. So I, I think that, you know, the big part of the news here is, is just that uh, King Schools is making an even further commitment to our partners in flight schools and in uh, colleges and universities to give them a forum, give them an opportunity to come and share ideas, share uh, what they've learned. And we've, we've chosen specific areas that we think are super valuable that all flight schools, all colleges, all universities should know about. And those will be the main topics that are discussed. Beyond that, there'll be lots of forums for, for those folks to interact and talk with one another. And as John said, we see a real need for that in the industry because things are changing so rapidly with the volume of flight training going on. Um, so I, I think that the news is really that, that King Schools is making a commitment to our partners in flight schools and universities by hosting this in-person 
opportunity to exchange information and to learn about things that they can take home and help improve their businesses. Um, so we're, we're very excited to do it. We're not looking at it as a one-off. We're looking at it as, as an annual event in, in San Diego. So there's just a couple more topics I'd like to move through quickly. And one is, and, and some of these have been announced before, so, so this is really just um, putting back in your mind some important things about King Schools. And one is that you may or may not be aware, but King Schools now has a complete set of 141 uh, approved, and I say FAA approved because it, they've been, these curriculum have been to Washington, and we have a letter from the FAA that says that course meets the FAA requirements. Now that's not enough for a school to train under 141, obviously. They still need to take that letter and along with some other information to their local FISDO, who's going to inspect them over time and make sure that they're, they're fulfilling the requirements. But it takes them a long ways there. So if they choose King, to go with King Schools in our, in our uh, flight training system, they will have approved curriculum all the way from private through CFII. So putting it together an ab initio program is well within the reach. And together with the concierge program that Brian talked about, even a brand new school who's never done 141 and isn't sure how to go about it, they have a resource at King Schools to help them establish that program and get going with our courses that are, I, I don't want to say easy, because with FAA, you never know. It depends on the local FISDOs and how busy they are because when they sign up for a 141 program, they're signing up long term. They're signing up to inspect that program over time. But nonetheless, we have a resource at King Schools that they can work with in order to put together the very best TCO, which is what they need to submit to the, to the FISDO in order to get approval that, that you can put together. So the very best odds and chances of success in putting together 141 programs. And like I say, it doesn't stop at private pilot. It takes them all the way through double I. On the flight instructor side, which is, continues to be a big part of King School's business, is direct to independent CFIs. If you haven't heard, King School's has a flight instructor program. And that flight instructor program actually gives independent flight instructors free access to our courses from private through CFI. So they can have free access to the same courses that their customers are using, and they can go over and review themselves, or they can sit in front of the computer with a, a customer using their access and review courses, um, review questions, and answer questions together with their knowledge and the King School's knowledge in the course, and that really makes a super flight instructor. So the flight instructor program does that. It also gives them the ability to track their students' progress through their home study course. So they're able to connect to their learning pilot and be able to track their home study progress. And that's an area we're working on evolving so that we have more reports and more, uh, let's call it business intelligence for the, uh, for the flight instructors. Along that line, we do have an, also some pilot uh, recruitment tools that can be used by CFIs if they have folks that are thinking about learning to fly and they haven't quite committed yet. And one of those is a new course that we have called Your First Flying Lesson. We actually have two of these courses. We have a course that John did um, 15 years ago or so. I say 200 years ago. Yeah, <laughs> which, is, which is a wonder, wonderful course. We, we have a new course that I did, uh, and, and they, they have different destinations, but both of them have the same objective. And the objective is to show the beauty of flight and to show how understandable the flight concepts are through the idea of a first flying lesson where you learn about the basic, the control surfaces, the controls of the aircraft, the basic instruments, basic maneuvers. So you learn that as we're taking a trip, in my case, the Catalina Island, and in John's case, to... Sedona, California. Sedona. So Sedona, Arizona. Arizona. Let's make it so, Arizona. So beautiful destinations. Uh, they're both great courses, and both can be used by uh, flight instructors in order to kind of push that potential student over the edge and make them uh, excited about learning to fly. Now, I'd like to just uh, take a, a quick moment because we, we have new scholarships open. You may or may not be aware, but King Schools has made a commitment to um, 
to CFIs in particular and, and to folks that want to become CFIs and are very deserving in helping them with a scholarship. Martha is going to talk about uh, the, the two scholarships that we offer on an annual basis. Both are open now for application. The two big scholarships that we offer, the first one was through Women in Aviation, uh, a, the Martha King Scholarship for Women Flight Instructors, and the second one, the NAFI Scholarship, King School's NAFI Shop, a scholarship for certificated flight instructors and we've been doing it with WAI for eight years now I think and with NAFI for seven. Uh, the scholarship is $5,000 cash for a CFI certificate initial or add-on rating along with free lifetime access to every King Schools course and Ferks for Life uh, and that total is uh, we say $18,000, I think it's actually up over 20000 at this point with all of the additional uh, courses that we have developed and the applications are, uh, are live available now at kingschools.com slash scholarship. And uh, because WAI, Women in Aviation Scholarship, was our first, and named after me, so I get to talk about it. I'd like to ask Peggy Chabrian to come up, the founder and the uh, former head of WAI, and just say a, a brief word about why scholarships are important to our aviation community. Thank you, Martha. Well, the scholarships are available for uh, a number of reasons. Somebody who's got an interest in aviation but not quite sure where they're gonna get the resources to do it or, or to complete a program maybe they're already in. They just need that little extra. Um, and I think also the one you developed, uh, Martha, was particularly uh, good for um, if women who wanted additional flight instructor ratings with the CFII or CF multi-engine or, or what have you. And it's just that, that uh, opportunity to, to get that next rating and to be a part of the aviation community at that next level. And thank you, Martha and John, <laughs> for the scholarship. Thank you. Our scholarship winner for this year is here with us today, and I'd like for Pilar Wolfsteller to come up, and we'll introduce her. We uh, announced this at WAI conference in 2003, and would you like to say a few words about your background and what the scholarship means to you? Thanks very much. Uh, my name is Pilar Wolfsteller. I was the scholarship winner, the WAI scholarship winner this year. Um, I have been flying for about 25 years as a private pilot. Uh, just recently got my instrument, got my commercial, and um, when I found out that these scholarships were available, I thought, oh well, I'll just apply on a whim. I'm never gonna get it anyway. <laughs> and I got it, and it really was that push for me to get my certified flight instructor certificate. And it was, um, I never thought I could do such a thing. So. WAI says scholarships change lives, and it's changed mine. So I, I got my CFI in April, and I'm, I'm really proud of it. It was really hard work. Um, but um, thanks to the scholarship, I was able to, to get that and um, you know fulfill a promise I made to my mother before she passed away. Thank you. And <laughs> well, the thing I remember from her uh, part of what we ask for on each of the applications is uh, an essay, and the words that I remember the most out of the essay, and I hope this doesn't embarrass you, Pilar, when she was in high school, she got interested in aviation, and she went to her physics teacher, a man, of course, and asked him about aviation and learning to fly. And, of course, this was in the 80s, he said, you're not smart enough to learn to fly, and besides, who would pay a woman to fly an airplane anyway? So here she is, about to become a certificated flight instructor, and uh, she works uh, in aviation as a writer for Flight Global, Global, correct? And you're the America's Hemisphere editor, if I remember right, okay? So Pilar Wolfsteller, and she'll be around here for a little bit afterwards if you want to interview. Karen, would you like to come up? Karen is the chair of NAFI, and uh, we celebrated the 
uh, our scholarship winner at Sun and Fun together, uh, Tracy uh, Abutalele, and um, uh, a very inspirational uh, woman who grew up in Nigeria and in order to create the money to learn to fly, started uh, manufacturing uh, shoes, and part of the profit of those shoes paid, uh, the sale of the shoes paid for her flight training, and part of the profit went to a hospital in Ni uh, Nigeria, in the capital of Lagos, to pay the hospital bills of poor women who had children in the hospital, gave birth to children, and didn't have the money to pay the hospital bills. So you want to talk a little bit about the scholarship from NAFI's standpoint? Certainly. Well, we've been thrilled. They're always looking forward to give back to the community. When I talk to them individually, these are just the kind of dedicated, inspirational, generous, giving persons that really are the epitome of excellence in flight training. Flight training. So we're so thrilled to partner with you for so many years. Love to meet these individuals and hope to continue for many more decades to come. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'd like to acknowledge Bob Mater, who is the Chairman Emeritus of NAFI. Okay, and Barry, I think, thank you very much, Karen. I think it's back to you now. Thank, thank you so much, Martha. We're, we're thrilled to do those two scholarships. Our um, winners really exemplify the, the very best of courageousness and, uh, and desire and wanting to make a difference, not only in becoming a CFI, but in the world, and we, we expect to see wonderful things from every one of them, and we already have. It's been very, very rewarding. So we need to wrap up. Uh, I think uh, EAA is about to kick us all out of here, and uh, as John says, we've been kicked out of uh, a lot of nicer places before, and you know we can add this to it. But uh, in any case, I want to thank you all for coming, and uh, I, I did want to just mention briefly, I, I know that we want to get out of here, but... Uh, John and Martha have written two wonderful books that are available on Amazon. I implore you to check them out. We've covered them in a couple previous uh, press conferences, but, uh, but I, both have very unique angles, one on business, one on flying. So take a look at it on uh, Amazon.com. You can just search John and Martha King, and you'll find those two books. Um, if, if you have not yet received one, and a member of the press, you'd like to receive one, See John Dowd, he'll ensure that you get a copy of each one of those books. And uh, that is pretty much it. The last one is just to see John and make sure that if you didn't receive an invite to this uh, press conference that you get on our mailing list for all of our future invites. Thank you so much for coming out. Enjoy the lunch, it's out and ready to go. I hope you'll be able to stay and hang around. Uh, feel free to come up to any of us for more questions.